what since then I don't know I like I blocked out a lot of stuff so I've been paying every day maybe there's like one good week but I think it's hand in hand with the fibromyalgia and the PMDD where it's like attacking my fucking system but as long you know people need to know look into your fucking records like my cousin told me she lives in California she said this the same thing's happening with her right now that she's requesting her medical records because there's a lot of shit going on with her so uh, just pay attention to your shit request your medical records after you go to the doctor just not that little slip that they give you that says you know at home care request the, the entire thing at least, you know just if things are going on with you because this has been going on like my whole life but when I actually went and got it checked out was in 2013 so for the past six years I've been dealing with trying to figure out how to deal with this pain better and then I always thought maybe it was my weight but then Amanda and I asked me about it and even when I was 20 30 pounds lighter I still the, stick, the pain was still there so but just check your shit out but you know what I could get my NMJ card now because I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and PMDD and anxiety I don't think they give it for anxiety though I'm not sure I can you can get it for your eyes yeah but I don't you can't I don't think I can with your use it job. anymore with my new job you can't talk about your new job either, could you? No, I'm, I'm not going to talk about my new job. But Aww. it's exciting. <laughs> and it's like one of those dream jobs that you never think you're going to get. And then you get it and you're like, wait, what? I'm very proud of her. It's a life changer for sure. She's going to be my sugar mama. Uh, we'll see about that. Oh, but, damn. Uh -huh. thought you loved me. I do love you, but is it going to be enough? No, I'm going to get a part-time job. Yeah. Because I still need, we still need somebody to be here for the kids. Apparently, they're not. <laughs> they're not self sufficient yet. <laughs> they're no. not self sufficient. So, you know, when I was thirteen, I was pretty self sufficient. Like my parents left us alone all the time, but there was also a bunch of us at a, at a time together. So it was different. We it was live. Different times. We, we don't live very close to town, so it was also a different time. Yeah, because I'm sure, like you said, your mom and dad let you fucking go off and do shit. Yeah. Yeah. But nowadays, like, the kids are so oblivious to life. Yeah. So uh, I'm probably just going to get a part-time job if unless I get this other job that I can't talk about because <laughs> these, are, these are professional fucking jobs we're fucking talking about here. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Damn. What are we grown up or what? Yeah. I can't. I have to dress conservatively and I cannot talk about politics at work. And and he's like, other people are going to talk about it. You can't talk about it. And I'm like, okay. Okay. But let's just do this. She had an interview in June. Mm -hmm. And then she had a second interview just two days ago? Yesterday. It was yesterday. Yeah. What happened was I had an interview in June. They never called me back. Never said a word. And so I got another job because I figured uh, I didn't get that one. And that's fine. Turns out they had hired somebody else, but they had thought so highly of me that when another position opened up, they called me and said, hey, would you like to interview for this position, same position, um, and do the second interview? And so I did the second interview yesterday. No more than 20 minutes after I did this interview did they call me and say, hey, the boss, the owner of the company wants to meet with you. So I had that interview at lunchtime, and I was so nervous at the end of the interview that he's like, listen, I'm going to go back. We're going to send you a contract right after I get out of here. You got the job. Now do you have any questions? And I'm like, oh, no. So it was a good day. And I told her, I said, you're meeting for uh, the boss of the company. Your third interview, you have the job. You're having lunch and lunch interview with him. You have the job. But that didn't calm her nerves, and she, as we discussed, her brain probably was going all out of the world. Yeah. She gave you a CBD. Well, that's okay. As soon as he said he liked sci-fi, I'm like, okay, we're, we're good. So, she met the mob boss. Mm -hmm. I told her, I said, it's like a video game where you, 
you're at the mob boss. You're almost. It's a end, boss fight. As the boy says. <laughs> so yeah, she's got a really good job. I have an interview next week with a job I can't talk about. Oh. <sighs> so we'll see what happens, and then I have two other places that I need to call back. And I'm thinking about applying at like Starbucks at, by the kids' school, so if something happens, I can just be there to pick them up. Because the girl likes to call and say that she needs to go home a lot. Yeah, she's not looking forward to using her crutches at school. But, I, you know, either way, I think I'll be happy get, getting a, any job right now. It'll be okay. We'll be fine. Yeah, we'll I am be fine. very positive about our future, whereas a week ago I was not, so a, a lot can change in a week. Why were you not? What happened a week ago? What happened a week ago? The car. Oh, yeah. You yeah. talked about it already, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but that's just a vehicle. I know. So many other things can happen. Look at that. <laughs> so, anyhow... Well, was yeah. it, you're done. <laughs> Is that what you just said? Is yes. there any more information? Did you, oh yeah, you took yeah. A CD. I you... talked about no. I talked about Liz Gilbert. I talked about uh, the history of coming out day, which I thought was fascinating. I talked about what to do if your kid comes out. Um, I just said I love you no matter what, and that was it. And then she and then. <laughs> <laughs> you going down the list of things that happened? Yeah. <laughs> the no. only thing I didn't go go through was the definition of open, but I didn't think I needed to. <laughs> she took a CBD, so she's chilling right now. <laughs> and that's what's going on. I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> well, I already have ideas for the next episode, and then the episode after that, so I have some work to do. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just take me out of the equation. Uh, well, you just answered my questions, and that's all you need to do. Oh, okay. Damn, that bruise on her leg. I'll take a picture of it and post it on Instagram. You guys need to see it. What happened was... When girl ran into the lounge chair, it hit both me and Tisa. Yeah, but it hit you the most. Mine is just a scratch. I thought there was going to be a bruise. It hit you really hard. Yeah, I got so. a bruise... On a good portion of my shin, which means my daughter really got hurt bad. Yeah, and I'll take a picture. She hit hard. She hit really hard. I'll take a picture. You. <laughs> Taking a picture of it right now. And I will be posting it on the Facebook page and the Instagram page. So you can check how sad this fucking looks. Looks really bad. But thank you for joining us this evening on National Coming Out Day. And learning about us and us coming out and us having fibromyalgia. Us. Oh, so she's like, I hope you don't use the fibromyalgia card. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's like saying that you can't do things because you have fibromyalgia. I'm like, have I ever used anything as an excuse? And I was like, I don't use PMDD as an excuse because I'm in fucking pain. So I still do shit. I just cleaned the house today. I know. I know that you don't do that. I know. There are some people that I do. I have known people who do that. and um, I'm definitely not a person that would because that's giving up on yourself. Right. I'm like, and I'm not going to give up on myself. I may complain that I'm hurting because it fucking hurts. I wish I could show you the pain that I have. Well, like I was telling that girl today, um, I don't believe in and I can't world because... There's always ways to scale things to your level, even if it's just cleaning the house. But guess what, baby? You know what? I'm a Mexican. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Thank you. I'm not a Mexican. I'm a Mexican. I'm making sure. <laughs> I won't fucking ever use it as an excuse. I'll just fucking use it as an excuse to get my marijuana card because I'm broken and it hurts. The CBD is actually helping out. So, yeah. like... It helps out my anxiety and my focus as well. It helped out this, like, usually I'm in, like, out of whack. Like, a lot worse than I am. And 
I'm walking easier than I was last yeah. month at this time. And usually I'm well, tossing and turning. Well, between the CBD and the exercise. That's true. Exercise too. But we didn't do anything today. Or, you didn't do anything today. Well, I, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm not waking up at the butt crack of dawn and to... And, you, and that's what I even said. I said, I'm not going to wake up with you and go walking with you because then I don't want to slow you down because I hurt. And then you're like, no, you should come. And then now you're like, oh, you shouldn't come with me because I will walk too fast. So. I don't get the little minutes on my watch if I walk too slow. Because you, your watch sucks and I'm buying you a Fit Fab thingy, whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> what is it called? Uh, Fitbit. Fitbit. That the Fit Fat thing is that thing right there, that box, right? Yeah. Yeah, so anyhow, but I didn't get exercise the past two days because, we, well, I was going to, but then the girl smashed her foot into the ground, and then today we had a friend come over. Speaking of coming out today, we forgot about to talk about that. Her son came out of the closet about two months ago, she says, but he says a couple weeks, but who knows, he's 12. He came out as gay, and he's getting bullied at school, so uh, when he gets bullied, his attitude turns to shit, she said, and he's getting in trouble a lot. Um at school and so he's getting in because he's changing in his attitude he's getting in trouble and getting things taken away but uh my our kid wanted to meet him so bad like for a week and a half she, as soon as i knew found out that he was gay i told her and she's like i want to meet him i want to meet him so we had a play date of sorts today and they were awkward in the beginning but then they played D D with the boy so mm -hmm. and actually it was Two of her sons, and then the boy and the girl played with them. And then they got bored really quick. Yeah. And then we told them to go to the park. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we get a call ten minutes later. Yep. Yeah. Come pick me up. Girl couldn't walk home. She was sitting on the floor when I got there, for one. And then he, boy was like, I'm out. I'm walking home. Like, he, didn't, he was, like, frustrated with her, I guess. Yeah. And so she couldn't even get up off the floor. And so I had explained to her to use the middle part as leverage to get herself up. And then she's like, I can't do it. I can't. I was like, just do it. I'm like, all you got to do is push yourself up. That was a gunshot, huh? Was it a gunshot? It sounded like a gunshot. Oh, I don't like that. We're in surprise in the boonies, baby. Okay. Did you think it sounded like a firecracker? No. It sounded heavier than that. Exactly. That's why that dog is barking. Well, dogs would bark at anything, and our dogs are out there inside, so it's not ours. But, um, and they exchanged phone numbers, so hopefully she can help him with everything. And then there's also a group called One in Ten that I used to go to when I was younger that helped me just become more confident and made a, a lot of connections, and I had a mentor uh, Miss Babe Kaler, uh, who has been in the community forever and she's amazing and she was my mentor for many years. Um, but yeah, so hopefully they go to, go to one in 10 and get all the help that they need. Yeah. A girl can use that too. Yeah. Meeting other people that are out and not just like, cause any these kids these days, it, it's, you know, understandable. It's always a fad to say that you're something that's in right now. So there's, she tells us about a lot of kids at school say that they're bisexual, that they're trans, like, you know, because they're hearing these things and they don't really know what they are. And, you know, it, I don't know. I just want her to be around people that can help them figure it out and not just throw words around just because it's a popular thing to do. Because with most people, that's what happens. So, I just hope that this group, if they go, which I hope they do, because I think one just opened up and she said Litchfield. Litchfield, yeah. So, hopefully the kids will be going to that, wherever that is. Because there was only one when I was born. This was 20 years ago. So. Yeah, it's gotten bigger and bigger. And, um. I did my internship with them when yeah. I was in college, so. And I know that when I was growing up, um, my church group was big for me and, and being around youth that aren't at your school um, kind of is a growing experience for kids so you know just having a group of kids that are like them I think is important definitely 
Well, thank you for tuning in this episode of National Coming Out Day 2019. And we'll talk to you soon.